Hello everyone, I'm Bra Misra. We got an update today. Uh, big update. <laughs> I think this is like the biggest up I mean we haven't the last one was just talking about Gen Con and stuff. This is a big, big, big update. Uh, we're gonna go through it. It's mostly about Black Knight. Uh, this is a great update. This is a huge update. So here it is, newest update, talking about Gambler's Chest Fulfillment. We have, uh, congratulations to all, the Gambler's Chest Expansion Fulfillment is 97% complete. We have a small percentage of straggling backers and some customer support cases we want to respectfully solve before we declare a full finish on this. So far we have successfully delivered over 20,000 Gambler's Chests. Watching people play, seeing the painted miniatures, we are ecstatic, beyond the moon, besides ourselves, frenzied with excitement. Uh, in respect to those still waiting for Gambler's Chest to land safely at the door, we are pushing back the official release of the Gambler's Chest and opening another round of pre-orders. If you have any friends on the fence, now is the best time for them to join you in darkness of kingdom death. Then there's the thing for pre-orders. Black Knight expansion in production. Estimated fulfillment, quarter one, 2024. That's estimated. Please excuse the photos, these are all preliminary samples, so the print quality is nowhere near as high as the final production. We're using the same factory we did for Gambler's Chest, so it's going to be nice. Also, did I ever mention that we fully re-sculpted the male and female squire for their plastic in, uh, incarnations? I love the original sculpts, but they are definitely, are, but they definitely showed their age. Lockman also came through with 16 stunning tiles to make up the Black Knight Showdown board. The Squires campaign was a blast to write, and it's really paved the road for the other five Lantern Year campaigns that are included in Campaigns of Death. While Kingdom Death Monster was originally designed for emergent narratives, the story-driven mini-campaigns are not only fun to make, but I suspect they will also help everyone connect to the world. This Black Knight expansion is packed. Check it out. So then we get a bunch of uh, images for Black Knight here. Uh, we're gonna look at them. We're gonna go over them. I'm gonna we'll look at different ones and everything. So um, here we go. This is the thing. Hard plastics done. We're so excited to assemble, paint, and get devastated by this handsome knight. He's such a good boy. Armor set best. The Black Knight scavenge the sanctuary and find patterns for these powerful armor sets. So these are armor sets. Very cool stuff. Very cool. Um, where is it? Squires of the Citadel. This is the five Lantern Year campaign. So, again, we're going to look at all this stuff. Here they are. Iola, Kane, L, and Owen. Uh, Black Knight. 29 AI cards, 24 hit location cards. Again, we're going to look at some of these things. Hand-drawn showdown tiles. These are interesting. Very neat, very neat. Uh, handsome 40-page rulebook. Upgraded cover material and thicker paper stock, so you can see the cover material is kind of updated here a little bit. It's golden now. Uh, That's quite the upgrade. And we have books here, books here, artwork here, pattern and seed patterns. Looking at all these things, 106 cards in total. Tactics cards are making a return. We'll look at these again someplace else. Look at this stuff. Look at, we'll look at all this stuff elsewhere in a minute when we're done here. Uh, vignette survivors. These are interesting. I was not expecting these to return, but I guess how else are you going to do the five-year campaign? So vignette survivors. These things are in Giga Lion. So three settlement events. Nice. CC reward and knowledge cards. Very nice. Uh, these are the node uh, Nemesis Node 3, as you can see here. We'll talk about this in a minute, but... Uh, this raises the question as to why Butcher, uh, Atnis, uh, and Hand didn't get them in Gambler's Chest, but I guess whatever. Uh, if all Nemesis nodes are going to have them now, hopefully they get them in uh, Campaigns of Death. But uh, Black Knight expansion last call, and then you can go pre-order it. The price went up. We'll talk about that. Well, I can just mention the price now. Price went up. It's 105 for pre-order, but... Uh, 125 for MSRP now. That's a lot. Tale of Two Dogs, the other dog. To be honest, Gamers Chester Film really took it out of the power off, took the full power out of our team. In order to get a new con in your hands as soon as possible, we decided to prioritize finishing the Black Knight expansion and getting into production before wrapping up the Frog Dog expansion. Uh, that's all into the or that's all in the clear though, and we expect to be moving the expansion towards 
our print partner by the end of October. It might be a little sooner. There's only final balance tweaking in our last flavor slash lore pass through uh, pass through the book left. Uh, prologue, prologued dog. <laughs> event um some tasty arc survivors so this is interesting this is a uh gambler's chest arc survivor intro event which is interesting uh because i didn't think that like arc survivors needed the croc prologue to be things uh but i guess you know these gambler's chests just getting kicked around with survivors in them now is just uh the lore going forward uh they also include this one where it's just Devour the Wet Lion. This is the same as what the Croc already does. Uh, Campaigns of Death. Black Friday will be our Campaigns of Death preview. Please look forward to it. The art team has been busy illustrating pretty much exclusively for it. As of now, things are on track for the, for the project to be fulfilled August 2024. T-shirts, dice, roll survivors. We're looking forward to getting these rewards out the door in the next month or two. Uh, we looked a lot in the solutions initially. Thought we'd having... Of having t-shirts made in each shipping region would be the way to go. Uh, however, to research and check samples from various suppliers, we decided to prioritize quality and treat our beloved t-shirts with the utmost importance they deserve. All the shirts will be made locally here in New York City by the same maker that has done our last few rounds of shirts. We have found them to be consistently high quality and markers of ex our makers of excellent shirts. So we will pack them in our New York office to ensure the size selections are correct. Shipping, 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 why? Uh, whatever. This is just, here, 97%, then they're gonna ship out Black Knight. Hard Plastic Showdown Board, potentially too heavy to combine shipping. I don't know what that means. Like, Black Knight and Hard, Sh Black Knight and hard Plastic Showdown Board can't be combined together. Then Frog Dog Expansion. Then Campaigns of Death. Then Titan Beast slash Honeycomb Weaver Expansion. So these are the same expansion as to right here. And then T-Shirts, Dice, and Roll Survivors. In Perfect World, where shipping costs were reasonable, I think this plan was fine. But if we piecemeal everything, I think some backers and fans will find themselves spending money on shipping fees they would rather spend on more Kingdom Death. So this is we are looking towards. Working out better deals with carriers, warehouses, New Canada-based warehouse, building a pile of loop Shopify plugin, which would give fans a reward redemption center of sorts, so items could be shipped to themselves with up to with the with up-to-date prices and combined with more a holding back on production so content could be shipped at the same time, building master cartons. I mean these are just things they're exploring, so like it there's nothing here that's like saying that this is what's gonna happen. So, uh, whatever. We did our best with Gamer's Chest and ended up at nearly 350k at, at a deficit. If you had an issue, please run, whatever. Uh, Gamer's Chest Hotfix Revised Outskirts. We have identified a small lack of clarity regarding the scout system that some of our more technical players have asked about. Uh, what we intended. When your scout dies, the other survivors will bring the gear and corpses back to the settlement with them so long as there is a living survivor left to do so. How some players were playing. When the scout dies, the gear for any subsequent survivor death is automatically and instantly lost. Um, yes. Uh, the way it was worded is just this second sentence here. A victorious... No, wait. When a survivor dies, their gear does not return to settlement storage. Uh, that is all it used to say. So that would be like if the scout was dead. There was no like limitation or no restriction on how to avoid distinguished guideposts. That was just a thing that was going on forever. It even takes place during the settlement phase, I guess, uh, or returning survivors. You can never really tell because it never said so. But now it says a victorious survivor or scout must carry the gear back to the settlement. Okay, still doesn't help with settlement phase or whatever, but that's fine. It's much better. Here's the fix. We will make a printable PDF on our website later this month along with uh, record sheets for print. A physical version of this card will be available in Legendary Card Pack 2, which we'll be aiming to have be having ready at, during uh, 2024. Hooray! Uh, Legendary Card Pack 2 is amazing. That's a great thing. It's great to have that confirmed. Let's hope it happens. So today's questions. The customer support is very helpful. Uh, there's that. Truly mess catch up on all the outstanding things. Thanks for patience. Anything you can tell us about Abyssal Woods or Ivy Dragon? The Dragon's Sparrow slash Barrel Goblin will be both a Node 3 monster and a Finale monster. The Ivy Dragon 
to make use of the amazing multi-character model is planned as a Node 3 Quarry, Node 2 Nemesis, and Finale monster. The model will be able to be separate so you can battle its parts separately and together. Such an amazing model should be on the table as often as possible. Sure. Uh, can we get a chance to have 3D Black Knight Dream Swords checking with Atnus and as naughty and niceless as possible? I don't know. I doubt. Maybe. Who knows? We're going to release white box content. Single miniature content like gear cards, story events, strains, fighting arts, bundle without miniatures, death. Some people are into the game for the board game aspect of combining cool gear, fighting arts, and don't necessarily need want the miniatures to go to go with them. Uh, this is an interesting thing. The answer is if we reprint and update all that old content, I feel like it would be only fair to make a card pack for people that already have the models. However, we don't have plans to release game rules without miniatures as as a normal thing. To me, that's an incomplete experience and is outside my vision for Kingdom Death in general. Uh, that's fair. If you're going to sell content and stuff, you should get all that stuff. I don't think really like beta stuff should be repackaged and stuff. But uh, I do think if you're going to reprint Prince, per, uh, Percival and Fade and stuff like that, you should probably... I don't know if you necessarily need to put it in a card pack or whatever, but like... Should pr if you're gonna not, or if you're not gonna reprint, and you're just gonna resell and then upgrade something, like was the case with Twilight Night, Halloween Twilight Night, and no one knew because you didn't, you just upgraded the miniature, and no one knew that it had new cards in it, then no one wants. Then you're like forcing people to buy a miniature again to get the cards. So like in those cases, in those instances, 100% absolutely sure, and gotta get that seed pattern out that was never included in that white box release to begin with. So, next, we have... Uh, when is the website getting updated this month? So we'll be working on the shop site overhaul. This is great. When will we be getting Shippy Chan Mini? Uh, a Shipping Chan Mini. Toying with the idea of reaching a Shippy Container Mini for Black Fridays as a way to help recoup our gambler's chest shipping deficit. Have you ever made a decision about Ammon and Anna Explorers of Deaths? Take a poll in Discord to see what the community feels is fair. Uh, exclusive should be exclusive, but I understand where you're coming from. Uh, Friday the 13th is this month. That's true. Friday the 13th is this month. Will we see Kalenium Butcher? What's the status of Kalenium Butcher? Finished and in pre-production. I don't think we will see him this month, though. Maybe next month? This month is Black Knight is getting the spotlight. Titan B is its own expansion. Has enough content to be its own expansion. We are talking internally about dividing the Honeycomb Weaver into two expansions that will fulfill two backers at the same time, but be future standalone products that have a lot of synergy. This is a interesting thing. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. It's an interesting thing. Um, I guess it is whatever it is, but I mean, that's weird. I don't know. Probably should make that decision sooner rather than later, because, I mean, I would expect, I mean, if you're going to still take pre-orders for them as a combined thing, uh, you shouldn't be increasing the price of them, thinking that it will be two things, charging for that, and then, like, breaking them up and then increasing the price again. It's kind of weird, but whatever, it is what it is. Uh, I would just rather know. Again, it doesn't really affect anybody, it's just a weird thing. Uh, ETA and Frog Dog should... Should be sent to the factory this month, and I'll have more solid production date once they have reviewed it. We are pushing to get in production in November. Okay. Collect more data on the gamers chest first, so probably next year so we can make a lot of hotfixes and adjustments. This is for a legendary card pack. So, that's all great. Uh, hard plastic. All tools are complete. It looks so cool. Should pre-production sample later this month, and we will take some glorious photos of it for our next update. Super cool. Now... Uh, let's talk about this stuff, right? We're going to go back. We're actually going to go now and look at these cards from a different spot. So let me just pull that up now. All right, so here we are. Let's look at some of this stuff now. So we have, uh, as you can see here, these are zoomed in better images. So we have... Uh, Seasoned Duelist, here is a trait. This is the Black Knight himself here. Um, this is just one of his traits. 
The monster has plus three evasion. Ignore this if you are attacking from its blind spot. So it seems like blind, like Kingsman kind of like stuff. You want to be in his blind spot. Sheer cliffs. When a survivor suffers knockback to the board edge with knockback remaining, stop their knockback at the board edge and scramble to survive. Your remaining knockback will affect your fate. So that's how that works. That's interesting. Those are the two. Those are two of the traits for Doggo here. Next, we have this image. So you can see we're going to zoom in on a lot of this stuff. So here's Black Knight again. Uh, got the the cards here. L of the Citadel. Um, you can see all their like stuff. This is the the grids. So got Squire Tool Belt. Uh, put a token on this. If you would suffer knockback while there is a token on this, remove a token and place your survivor on the closest unoccupied stace instead. That's interesting. Uh, Squire Hood here is crazy good. <laughs> Squire Hood, you may reveal the top card from either the hit location or AI. Uh, if the trap is revealed this way, suffer three brain damage. Otherwise, you may discard it. So you can just discard whatever card you want with this uh, Squire Hood. Black Guard Knife, Deadly, and Persistence 1. So, on a perfect hit, if you are attacking from the blind spot, gain plus 1 luck for the attack. Then we have Squire Pants, Squire Tunic here. Uh, reduce all damage to hit locations by 1 to a minimum of 1. When your chest armor points reach uh, 0, lose this effect for the rest of the showdown. So, that's the Squire Tunic. And we have Squire Sandals, plus one movement, plus one evasion. When you are knocked down, roll 1d10. On a 6 plus, you nimbly recover and stand. I'm assuming that's what that means. So, let's see what else we have here. We have a White Lion trait card. So this White Lion trait is when your movement or knockback ends farther away from the monster, its hunger intensify, intensifies. Put a token on this card, and then, this is a trade for the White Lion, uh, at the start of each monster turn, remove a token from Mountain Predator and draw AI. Repeat this until there are no tokens, or repeat this until no tokens remains. This is a crazy trait. We have Portable Water Foam. Uh, I don't even know what this is. This is a gear. This stuff looks like it's for. it could be for Squire campaign. Who knows what it's exactly for, but this is so cool that there's like actual gear and stuff to go along with these things. So we have Portable Water Phone. Tune the Water Phone and roll 1d10. On an 8+, plus, the vibrations affect the monster. Remove one of its tokens, I guess from anywhere you want. So, uh, very interesting. Now let's look at the book here. So you can see here, look at this white lion artwork. This is the mountain lion. It says right here, this is part of the five-year campaign. So it's a legendary monster. So the way this looks like it works is this says like Lantern Year 3, mountain lion. And it has some stuff here, can't read. But settlement phase, looks like you have some endeavors here for stuff you can do here. So you can see them here. This is the settlement phase. Uh, then there's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of endeavors. Then you're going to have Hunt Phase, which is written right here behind my thing, which you just are going to do some rolls, and then you get events. Then you get Showdown Phase. So it's a very small, very condensed like settlement and showdown phase. Our settlement and Hunt Phase. Then the Showdown Phase, it looks like it's just a legendary white lion. Uh, it has 14 toughness for Lantern Year 3, uh, which is pretty crazy. Plus 2 speed, plus 2 damage. Uh, a whole bunch of traits and stuff. And then it says Type, White Lion... Uh, use level 3 white lion uh, stuff like that and then like animal empathy appears to be what you get I don't know if it's like an innovation it looks like it says innovation animal empathy who knows uh, but this artwork's so cool with the squires there then you have uh, lantern year 4 it looks like the quest no this is lantern year 2 this is lantern year 3 right yes mountain lions lantern year 2 this is lantern year 3 the quest uh, the end of this thing, so, but we'll, we'll read, I'll, I'll go into more of this, but here's, this is so cool, this is all the stuff for White Lion stuff, let's go to the next one. Here we have Secret Fighting Arts Tactics Cards, the re return of Tactics Cards for Black Knight here. Uh, Escape Artist, Fighting Art, Black Knight, if you would suffer an after damage effect, if you would suffer an after damage effect, 
Roll 1d10. On an 8+, plus, you definitely escape. Ignore the effect. Right? Super cool. Um, yeah, this is... If you would suffer an after effect, then that's it. You would gain it, right? Um, or you would ignore it. Super cool. Disorders, innovations, another fighting art. It looks like regular fighting art. Secret fighting arts, maybe just one or two. So that's cool. That's Black Knight. This is the Nemesis node. I remember... We said we'd come back to it. So Nemesis Node 3, this was the CC reward. You can see Black Knight Cuisine. Attain the duty-bound Black Knight Knowledge Card. Nominate a survivor to gain it. Then they share it on the forum with a Lumi token. If anyone gains it this year, they also gain plus one Lumi. So then we have the three Knowledge Cards here. Duty-bound 1, Knowledge, Monster, Black Knight. This is a theory uh, when you depart. So very neat. Uh, I think this is Percival. I can't tell if that's Percival. Who knows who that is. Uh, next, we have Squire Armors. So this just looks like this is probably what they're wearing in the five-year thing. This is just cloth and satiated. This, I mean, this is just a complete set bonus. That's plus one to everything. And this looks like what you use for the vignette. Uh, these, the Count Armor, uh, add two to all hit locations. When you attack with a melee weapon, if it is not your first attack this round... Cancel any rea uh, reflex for wound reflex or wound reaction on hit locations drawn. Uh, that's crazy. You don't even need to wound fail or anything. They're just canceled. Just the fact that they're even there when you draw them. So now let's look at the Earl armor. This looks like plus three to all hit locations, it looks like. Double any bonuses gained by another survivor when you encourage. It's kind of cool. Uh, encouraging. Not a whole bunch of stuff does, but neat. Uh, then we, this one I can't really read for the third one here, but it looks like something gain a movement at the end of your act for something. Uh, someone gains the priority target token or gains a bleed token. It says like gains the, or gain the priority target. Who knows what that is? Some kind of token you're going to be gaining. Let's go to the next one. Here we have patterns and stuff. Clasping shield. It's a, Obviously, arc three or whatever. Survivor would tumble. This is probably the tumble fighting art, not the tumble knowledge. Sculpture and blacksmith. So, um, the seed patterns is clasping shield block two. If another survivor would collide with you due to knockback, instead end their knockback and place them standing in the nearest unoccupied space to you. Interesting. Uh, here we have the boots for that one set that we couldn't read. Looks like that's probably the tier three set from the node Nemesis Node Three fight. Gain plus two movement while you have a sword in your gear grid. <laughs> Crazy good. It's pretty cheap too. It's only four iron, two leather, and two bone. Pretty cheap for considering that six armor and what it does. Looks like it works well with maybe like lantern because of the affinities and stuff. Uh, we've already gone over all these, already looked at all this stuff, but there's another image of it. So here's the showdown Black Knight page. Let's go ahead and read some of this. Uh, the story, the monster crept to the cliff edge and lifted its muzzle to the sky. It drew a breath so deep the clinging fog turned up the mountainside, tasting the air of far-off plains it's search for familiar scent. It's uh, uh, despirited cries sailing on the wind. Again, this is because it's looking for Percival. It's trying to sniff out Percival. Uh, it's her doggo. So then we got Seek out here. That's Instinct. Full move towards the closest survivor. They suffer knockback for the monster. Uh, cocks its head, pondering its next move. Shuffle the AI discard pile into the AI deck and the monster turn. So we can see some of its analogies here. It's got Smash, Sheer Cliffs, which we saw. Smash we didn't see. Red Preference uh, means it really loves red things. Again, Percival has red hair, so really loves its red stuff. Red cloak and everything here. Uh, I'm assuming that maybe it's also blood related because you can see the like cleaving right here. But uh, this is also like Percival's sword looks exactly like it. So I'm assuming this red preference is linked to Percival. Uh, probably also likes L. I'm assuming maybe the Squire campaign because she also has red hair. Uh, so we saw all this plus four toughness. Uh, to these are tokens, so you could get these removed with that thing. So 
This is cool. Showdown setup here. Look at this. Terrain and deployment. This showdown takes place on the Citadel Showdown board. The board consists of 16 tiles arranged in a 4x4 grid. Two starting tiles uh, denoted by the indicated arrows, so you can see them here. These are the two starting, these two, and then there they are. Uh, face, you turn those face up. Set up to uh, indicate, set up the arrows so they're pointing to each other. Shuffle the remaining 14 tiles and place them face down to complete the 4x4 grid as shown. They are revealed during the course of the showdown. I don't know if that means you'll be moving around like a dungeon crawl. Probably is what that will mean. You're moving around like a dungeon crawl. So, um, place the monster on its spot. Yep, yep. Uh, survivors are placed them, the survivors in unoccupied space of the start tile, and survivors go first. Uh, victory, get a club proficiency, which is not sword proficiency, which is interesting. Uh, I guess it's because he's swinging, he's just grabbing survivors and swinging them with those elastomer statues. Maybe that's why it's club proficiency, but not sword is super surprising. Um, defeat, any remaining corpses are shuffled unceremoniously off the edge. Their shrieking shapes swallowed by the fog. Archive all fragile gear. So this is an interesting one because it says uh, remaining corpses and stuff. So uh, those things are just thrown off, and then you get just archive fragile gear. It's weird because if you had a scout, how there wouldn't their gear wouldn't be on them. The scout would have it. You could still suffer defeat if the scout was hiding, and then so it's kind of weird what would happen there, I guess. Uh, let's look at rewards. The Black Knight disappears into a darkened cranny before the survivors can think to follow. Only its uh, lengthening howl remains until even that is replaced with rubble shaking, or with a rubble shaking rumble. <laughs> the monster is snoring deep in the heart of the citadel. Creeping at the edges of the darkness, the squires begin assessing the damage the first time the monster is defeated gain the black knight badge rare gear so that's the thing that'll let you probably draw black knight tactics cards just like all the other knights so tactics cards confirmed to return each time the monster is defeated the settlement gains the next level of the bell of challenge innovation note this on your settlement record sheet the survivors spy the darkened workshop if the settlement has collective toil when they defeat a level 3 black knight, the survivors observe the, cerem the ceremonial, uh, ceremonial uh, what is that? devotion required to maintain the crumbling citadel. During the next settlement phase, add plus 1 for each returning survivor to all endeavor rolls results this phase. For each re that's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. So there's the Black Knight stuff. Uh, here is the board, as you can see here. This is the thing that will be evolving. I think you can just move into these, and maybe that's how you reveal them. Or maybe the monster reveals them. I don't know. This should be in a this should be in the 4x4 grid or whatever. It showed up as in the setup, but maybe this is different. Don't know. Uh, here you can see all the stuff here. I uh, can't really read these, but this is a failure reaction. There's some disorders can kind of see like it rings this is must be the bell i was talking about I, I, these two are like hard to read uh can't really see these can't really see this these tiles stuff secret fighting arts just a bunch of stuff laid out here's the tiles look sick uh and more scout gear grids or squire gear grids so this is absolutely amazing update this was better than like any black uh dark Herald update, obviously, for Black Knight. But, I mean, this is just amazing. But it's obviously because it's now done and we can see so much stuff. But, uh, absolutely amazing. This is one of the best updates we've had in a long time. Probably since last Black Friday, probably. Uh, super cool. Black Knight's so cool. I'm so glad Black Knight's coming. We should maybe have Black, Black Knight by quarter one next year. Maybe right after Christmas, something like that. That's really cool. I can't wait to replace Hand. Black Knight is one of the ones that, if we were to get something from Wave 4 first, I'm glad it's Black Knight. Granted, it could have been First Hero or Campaigns of Death. Those also, First Hero, Campaigns of Death would be my first ones that I would want. Campaigns of Death mostly because we already have all that stuff. But I guess I'm glad Campaigns of Death is coming out after Gambler's Chest. But I would have just preferred Campaigns of Death to be next. And then um, First Hero, obviously, just because... 
skipping around for you not to play full lantern years and stuff that also would be nice so you could just speed a lot of this stuff because like even for me i'm like i've been playing a lot of games with chess live hopefully everyone's coming can come watch live try to do it the same time right around the same time every single day so come join us play through game with chess but what i was getting to was like, when can I start, like, reviewing and talking about Gambler's Chest, right? Do I need to then play Croc and other things outside of Ark Survivors? Do I need to play them in a regular Survivor before I get my full opinion? It's stuff like that where I wish First Hero would have been there. Then I could have, you know, gotten to King and stuff, just got a new settlement going, tried King a couple times, tried it without Ark Survivors, also gotten to Croc higher levels, tried it again without... The, just, so things like that, but... Um, so it's things like that. That's why I wish first hero. But of all the other ones, Black Knight, because one, Black Knight's just got such good lore around, around it. Black Knight's amazing, but also because it's a hand replacement, and it, like, that's great. I just get so sick of fighting hand. I haven't even gotten to him in our live streams yet for Camper's Chest, but I'm already sick of fighting him. So, uh, hand's great just to be, to be replaced. I can't wait to replace it. I can't wait to get a five-year campaign going. Can't wait to try it out. So, Black Knight is by far of the 12 expansions for Wave 4 that weren't huge, like, that weren't, like, completely game-altering, like Campaigns of Death and First Hero. Black Knight's the one I want the most, so I'm so glad it's coming first. So great to see it's coming so soon, too, after Gambler's Chest. That's awesome. Uh, this was a huge W. Huge wins all around. This is a great, great, great time for Kingdom Death. This year has been great for Kingdom Death. We've had so much Dark Ages and stuff. <laughs> where we just had no information. Now we're just getting abundance of info, abundance of cool stuff. Such a good time for Kingdom Death. So good. So, big W. Uh, couldn't be more happy. So, that's Black Knight. Uh, we should be trying him out in January, hopefully. So... I look forward to the next update, which should talk more about Frog Dog, talk about Showdown stuff. Then we're going into Black Friday already. Or no, yeah, Black Friday update already. Man, it's crazy. So, Alright, thanks so much for watching. <laughs> I'll see you in the next Kickstarter update video.